Hey everyone, this is Steve from Nanome. Uh, for this month's Nanome of the Month, we actually have a super special guest. Uh, this is Mike, and do you want to tell us a little bit more about your work? I'm Mike Bishop. I'm a medicinal chemist, and I'm here today because I'm working with Nanome on drug discovery applications. And today we're going to go into the literature and pull out a paper on protein kinase inhibitors. What we'll do is we'll look at some of the changes the authors made to the inhibitors that really improve the properties, both the binding properties as well as the solubility, and uh, they block some metabolism too, so we'll look at that. Awesome, let's hop into VR. So drug discovery scientists often use structure-based design uh, when they're working with protein kinases because they're able to get nice x-ray crystal structures of the protein, including the protein with ligands bound. And so today we're gonna look at a kinase called TNNI3K. This is a serine threonine kinase. And what a kinase does is it binds ATP and then transfers a phosphate from ATP to a serine or a threonine or a tyrosine, depending on what kind of kinase it is, and that changes the signaling or function of the protein substrate. And so this TNI3K is a really interesting one. There's, there's data from rodent studies, both ones where they overexpress the protein and others where they delete the protein, that has led investigators to think this could be a really important target for cardiovascular diseases. So this paper we have here is from some scientists at GSK published a few years ago where they found a new class of ligands that block this uh, kinase. And so we're just gonna take a look at the structure and, and look at the ligands uh, in the active site and uh, see what these scientists were thinking. Cool, so yeah, over here, uh, so this is our, our kinase, our little fun protein that we have today. And uh, let's see, I think our, our active site is gonna be right in this pocket here, correct? That's right, so this is where ATP would usually bind and uh, where the action happens. So a kinase basically has, has uh, two lobes, two domains, and in between is a hinge region, and that's in this cleft is where ATP usually binds. And so what we see here is the actual inhibitor, the HIT, molecule that was found from a screen by the scientists at GSK. And we can come right here in virtual reality into the active site and look at some of the key interactions that this ligand picks up with the, with the kinase. And so when you say screen, this was found with a, uh, a high throughput physical screen or this was done virtually? It, this was done with the high throughput physical screen, but the scientists at GSK know a lot about molecules that inhibit kinases. So they actually have a special set of kinase inhibitors that they can test in assays for kinase inhibition. And so this molecule came out of this kinase set that they had, this kinase inhibitor set. Cool, um, well here, let's, let's go ahead and, and zoom in and uh, maybe we could talk a little bit more about this. Okay, Steve, yeah, so we can see that this purine core makes some really important hydrogen bond interactions with this hinge region here. And this, the NH of this nitrogen makes a really nice hydrogen bond with this backbone carbonyl of the isoleucine over here. And then we can, and then we can see next to it, here at the N3 position, a really nice hydrogen bond between that nitrogen and the NH of that backbone isoleucine there. Um, so two you know, really good hydrogen bonds that are important for the activity of this inhibitor. But this inhibitor is also nice in that it has this N-methyl sulfonamide group that sticks way into the back pocket. And we can pull that over here closer to us. And, and this sulfonamide picks up three really important hydrogen bonds. And I think what we can see here is this, this is called the gatekeeper residue right here, this threonine. And there's a nice hydrogen bond between that threonine and uh, the NH here of uh, the sulfonamide. And then both of the oxygens of the sulfonamide pick up nice hydrogen bonds, one with the backbone NH here, and then the other with uh, a water molecule that then has hydrogen bond, two hydrogen bond interactions with the protein. So really a, a nice ligand to get started. But what I can tell you is, is the authors of the paper uh, wanted to make a molecule that was more potent than this one. 
this uh, had an IC50 on the kinase of about 500 nanomolar. They would like to get it at least one, maybe two orders of magnitude more potent. This compound was quite insoluble in aqueous solution, and it also didn't have good oral bioavailability. So these are things that drug discovery scientists care a lot about. And in the paper, they described changes they were able to make to this molecule that turned it into a much better tool molecule to use um, in vitro and in vivo. Looks like this is already a pretty powerful interaction with you know, three hydrogen bonds in that region, so I don't know how much more we could optimize there. Um, yeah, over here, we have some good hydrogen bond activity over there. Um, but yeah, so we, what, what's left on this molecule in terms of ways we could try to optimize it? Yeah, so, so there's a number of different things that, that scientists try. One is to try to pick up other interactions, and one is trying to improve the interactions you have, and another is to try to get rid of unfavorable interactions. And, and one thing, if I go into to, uh, MedChem mode, where I can draw and make changes, uh, we, can, we can look at a change that they made that was quite successful, and that was this nitrogen of the purine uh, making a molecule where that was a carbon instead. And what you can see here is now we have a desipurine, and we still have all the interactions we had before, but when they made this change, they saw a really nice increase in potency. And they think, it's, they think it could be a couple uh, reasons. One is there's less cost of desolvation having this carbon go into a pocket than a nitrogen, which is a more polar atom. But also, the purine has, has two different tautomeric forms, meaning the proton can be on either one of the two nitrogens. But you can only get a good hydrogen bond interaction if it's on the one that we're showing here. So by getting rid of this nitrogen, you can only have the tautomer, well, it's no longer a tautomer, you can only have the hydrogen on this nitrogen because uh, there's no nitrogen over here. So this was a really good change for them in potency. But then what they did is they also found that uh, there's a nice little lipophilic pocket, or a relatively large lipophilic pocket coming straight towards us, Steve. And they were able to so put... So this is pretty much this, this whole space that, that I'm inside right now, this, like, there's extra pockets. There's a lot they... of space available here. And, and they were able to do a number of different things here that, that were good. And one thing that they did was put halogens off of that same carbon we just looked at. So here we've put a bromine on there. They found that this uh, was a good change for them. It actually improved their, their pharmacokinetics um, it may have blocked a site of metabolism, or it may have uh, caused the molecule to have more plasma protein binding, leading to a longer half-life in the body. But it was a good change for them either way. So they also made a number of changes that weren't so good. And if, if we pull the molecule a little closer to ourselves, I can just describe some. If they put a group coming off this nitrogen, that was not a good change for them. So putting a methyl group here wasn't good. Uh, and, and likewise, um, putting, putting a methyl group, another methyl group coming off this amine wasn't good because then you no longer have the hydrogen bond there. But there were several places they could put larger groups and find that they bumped into the protein. They ended up with a clash and that was, that was not good for the potency. So they stayed away from those. But there was another place where they could, they could do a good job of, of improving properties. And you see, right where you are, Steve, you are in a really large pocket. It's really, it really faces out towards solvent. So this is an area where they realized they could put groups off this carbon that's right in front of us here and, and possibly um, improve properties or pick up potency, and that's what they did. They actually found that um, some different uh, dialkylamines there worked really well. And, and, but what they did when they put this amine there, they also found that they could make this a fairly large group. And I'm going to turn this into a morpholine. So it looks like a cyclohexane now, but if I put a nitrogen there and an oxygen over here, this is a morpholine. And but so this morpholine was great because it likely blocked a site of metabolism. Um, having this oxygen out here, another polar atom, uh, likely improved solubility for them. So this is quite a soluble molecule now. Uh, and the other thing 
is, is we think it probably packs in really nicely down here against this lipophilic pocket. So this was a molecule that the authors came up with that, that solved a number of the problems they had. It had very good oral bioavailability in animal models, good half-life, had good solubility, and was quite potent on the kinase. So this is a type of tool molecule that they could optimize using structure-based drug design, using the protein. And, and in nanome, where we are now, you can get a really good feel for interactions in virtual reality, as well as pockets that can be filled, or clashes that you'll have if you put too large a group in a position. And so, uh, so for this surface coloring, we actually ended up going with the uh, elemental surface coloring. And so if we see it's a red surface, this means there's an oxygen behind there. I'm really impressive that this group you know, sort of started with the, an idea for you know, a chemical that was in there from their screening results, um, and then went in and tried to modify it. And you know, um, you know, if the researchers were here now, I don't ever know, you know what they'd say if they could you know, get into this binding pocket here. I think they'd love to come in in virtual reality and look at this binding pocket. They certainly have methods to, to look at these interactions, but to be able to come in here and really get a great sense of the space, the relatively small amount of space right above and beyond, and to see how well this fits into the pocket, and then how these groups they put on stick out into this cavity here, um, it, it's really beautiful. Awesome. I think they would love it. Yeah, well, hopefully we could actually get them to join us. So, um, yeah, <laughs> if, if you're watching this and you made these molecules and we're working with this kinase, uh, go ahead and reach out to us, and we'd love to have you on the show sometime. Yeah, nice work, nice paper. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Hope that you enjoyed those molecules and virtual reality as much as we did. Uh, it was just super awesome getting into the binding pocket, seeing those different hydrogen bonds in the molecule. Yeah, I'm going to be thinking of new ideas that we might want to implement for new chemicals and then we'll try it again maybe in the future. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, as a drug discovery scientist, to be able to get into the pocket and really see those interactions in virtual reality, it, it's really an incredible experience. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in and we hope you enjoy next month's Nano of the Month uh, where we just got something in the mail and we'll be sharing more on that. Uh, next month, so tune in. Thanks, Steve. Cool. Thanks, everyone. This is so cool. <laughs> I'm just, uh, you know, the people who worked on this, uh, they would just probably love having this in their hand like I have right now and rotating it around. You know, seeing really what a perfect fit this molecule they made is in this pocket. It's really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs>